Okay. All right, so the Termitrack T3i is a, a, a three-in-one all sensor, um, but you can have a radar only unit. Uh, they can be updated, uh, of course, if you do decide to uh, have moisture or the thermal sensors. So the radar is purely motion. Uh, it operates on microwave emission. Um, it is fairly low microwaves, but health and safety, obviously, we need to err on the side of caution. Don't go waving it against uh, your body, holding against your body and looking into it and so forth. Uh, thermal sensor, it's a surface temperature uh, device. Uh, looking for anomalies and uh, so forth, which may indicate the presence of uh, insect activity or and also moisture. You know, there is a uh, laser pointer which comes out of the bottom of that, so for obvious reasons, we don't go, don't go pointing that into anyone's faces uh, and so forth. Uh, and then, of course, there's the moisture sensor, which is a, uh, a dual-mode moisture sensor. It has a relative and a direct mode. Uh, very simple. It's a non-invasive style moisture meter. can work on um, uh, numerous building materials uh, and very, very easy and accurate uh, device. Okay, so we operate under 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 a publication in Australia called the Australian Standards. I'm not sure what you have in uh, in your country, uh, but these these uh, publications uh, produce to give us guidelines, minimum guidelines on how inspections should be conducted uh, within structures. Uh, and part of the last update was including uh, termite radar units to uh, be as a suggestion uh, to to use. Uh, on, on special purpose or further investigation areas. So which is a very good thing for our industry, uh, promoting uh, promoting tech, uh, technological advances and so forth uh, for the betterment of our, uh, of our industry. But we still need to do a standard inspection. Uh, we do need to uh, do all the standard things we would do, timber sounding, uh, visual cues looking for, uh, oblique lighting techniques, uh, and then also moisture sensing. Uh, but obviously, primarily, if uh, you're dealing in a, a timber um, and or plasterboard style buildings. So turning the unit on, quite simple. We need to install the batteries. When the batteries go in, you may have noticed that uh, the LED lights uh, do change color and flicker. That's a self-diagnostic check it's uh, performing. Uh, upon itself. Uh, so if there is no issues from that uh, diagnostic check, all the lights will go out, uh, and then we just need to turn the turn the device on, switch the power it on, and a green light will be on. Uh, but if any lights do stay on at that stage, there, there is an issue, uh, either internally or low voltage batteries. Uh, so we do recommend replacing your batteries with the new set and seeing what happens. Um, if lights stay on again, you need to take note of which light, uh, what colour that light is, get in touch with Termitrack and they will let you know how it can be rectified. So powering it on, green light, uh, then we need to open our Android device, open the app, hit connect, excuse me, uh, and from uh, connecting then the green light will change to blue. And we'll note the app is in colour scale and then we're ready to use the sensors available to us. Uh, when we are using the sensors, uh, we have a green and a blue light with radar, a blue and a blue with moisture and a red and a blue with the thermal. Uh, with the batteries, as we know, it's a double A uh, batteries, five of them to run. Uh, the device, the biggest killer of these batteries is actually leaving them in the device. Even if the device is, is, is powered off, uh, there is still some componentry which drains against those batteries. Uh, and what we will find is those batteries will deplete quite quickly and we run the risk of damaging uh, those batteries and we cannot charge them up again. So it's always recommended to remove batteries from the unit when it's not in use, uh, keeping the batteries in a, in a cool, dry spot. Uh, and this will prevent corrosion on batteries and battery terminals and ultimately damaging the unit if they're left in. 
Uh, so do look after your batteries and you will get uh, quite a few years of life out of those uh, out of those batteries. So with the batteries you get supplied in the kit, you should have 10 batteries. And with those uh, 10 batteries, they all look the same, obviously. So it is advisable to mark five batteries. So you have two, two sets of five batteries. So continually using them uh, together, uh, we've found it does seem to help with longevity of those batteries, always being charged at the same rate, uh, depleted and so forth. Uh, so get into a habit with that, with your charging regime. Um, having reminders for yourself uh, not to leave batteries in the in the device, uh, and away you go. So maintenance and looking after your equipment is uh, is paramount. So advantages of the rain, obviously, it's a, it's an accurate tool to aid in the confirmation of, of termite activity or other insects if you're so using it. Uh, in that manner. Uh, it is accurate even though it is a small field of view um, and it's a non-invasive for confirmation of any activity. So if you do see a damaged area you don't have to disturb uh, any possible termite activity that may be within that area. So proving or disproving uh, in a non-invasive fashion. So it does reduce the need to pull things apart, uh, open things up, uh, but it doesn't remove the need. So there may be a situation every now and again where you do do still need to uh, do a more invasive inspection, but in the short term, it certainly um, it certainly does reduce that need to do it. So obviously with termites, particularly if we've got them in a structure, uh, the least disturbance uh, that we can do is is always a uh, better option. And tracking of termites. Um, it's one thing seeing them in a structure, but then trying to work out how they entered the structure uh, is the next thing we need to do. So spending time utilising the device to track those uh, termites, hopefully back to uh, hopefully back to a uh, entrance point, if we can, uh, knowing where a termite uh, the termites have have made their way into the structure obviously helps us prevent them from coming back in again. And precise treatment, uh, knowing exactly where the extent of the activity is, where they're traveling to, where they've come from. Uh, it uh, certainly makes it easier to treat them, uh, more success obviously uh, for treating them. Uh, and also you will save product. Uh, by having the treatment products uh, put in the exact area where where the termites are, where it needs to be. So as far as positioning the device, uh, having the head of the radar unit against uh, the material you're trying to penetrate is always the, the best option. Uh, reduce any air gap uh, at all. Uh, and that will uh, give you maximum penetration uh, to our materials. So we can get some uh, microwave emission uh, that reflects off uh, materials, particularly more smooth and glossy type materials. Even if we are flush against that material, it can travel sideways um, along it. So we do need to be mindful of that, that when we are using it, that we're not, excuse me, that we're not putting any excess movement uh, around the area. Uh, or looking for any other items in the immediate vicinity, which could, can create a, a situation of uh, of movement uh, on the screen. Uh, as far as on very smooth, glossy material, so uh, tiles, for example, using it when it does emit out sideways to avoid uh, or reduce that happening, we can use a little piece of cardboard uh, in between uh, the device and the material, and that can dampen. Uh, any sideway e emission that we uh, that we may experience, but the positioning um, of the of the radar head uh, is vital. Obviously, it needs to be exactly where the where the termites are. 
uh, through there. So changing angles, moving at a fraction one side or the other uh, from where you're currently positioned can mean the difference between uh, detecting activity or missing it completely. So as far as building materials, so it does penetrate everything here on the screen. It certainly will penetrate uh, to varying depths and degree, obviously. Now, as far as timber goes, uh, softwood timbers and the most common uh, framing timber uh, in Australia is, is a pine, so a softwood. Uh, and we've been achieving up to 85 millimetres uh, of, of penetration. As we go up into hardwoods, it certainly does reduce um, considerably, uh, but we can still get, we still can achieve uh, around the 40, 45 millimetre uh, depth of penetration in, in hardwood timbers. Uh, concrete blocks and bricks, it will, uh, it will certainly penetrate through that. It won't go through two. Two bricks uh, won't go through a block that has uh, has the core filled with uh, with cement, but it will get into the cavity uh, of the concrete blocks, and of course uh, you can track through the mortar uh, mortar lines. As we know, slight cracking is enough for termites to uh, travel through those areas. Uh, particle boards, uh, composite boards, and so forth, uh, chipboard MDF. Now it certainly will penetrate uh, that type of material as well. Uh, plasterboards, uh, tiles, marble, granite, yes, it uh, it does penetrate those surfaces, uh, being very porous material, but we do have to be mindful of any, um, any sideway reflection uh, of the emission due to the glossiness. Okay, so the actual field of view uh, of the radar is is this area here uh, on the on the head of the unit. You can see the area with square, uh, the red square. Uh, so there's a circular area there uh, you may notice uh, with little indents. Uh, that is the area of field of view. So it's 35 square millimeters uh, in that area. So obviously it is critical. Uh, that you move it around to get the correct protect, uh, correct um, direction. Uh, it does exit in a, a square fashion. It does not get larger further away from the device. Uh, so as you can see, if, if termites are travelling down below the unit, uh, you certainly can miss it or on the side or above. So it has to be movement somewhere within this area here. So again, it is uh, in particularly vital um, to, to, to have the correct position of it. It may mean changing angles, uh, uh, placing a, a notepad or a book or using the flip stand to, to increase angles of the device itself, or just moving it sideways or above, down, horizontally, diagonally, uh, as needed to detect that activity. Now, there are some limitations uh, to, to the unit. Uh, microwave technology can cannot penetrate any metallic objects. Uh, so if there is metal uh, within or beyond the material you're trying to penetrate, uh, it will not go past that metal. Uh, generally speaking, it will bounce off that metal. If, the, if, if we have an air gap open to the metal, it will give us some patterns on our screen, uh, which we may think that we are getting uh, termite activity, uh, when in actual fact, uh, it's just metal reflection. So that certainly is a possibility um, of happening, which we have to be mindful of. Uh, the other uh, limitation that we come across with the device is moisture. So uh, high moisture areas, and now we're talking indicative moisture content values of, of above 25%. Um, is going to reach almost total absorption. Uh, so moisture actually does absorb microwave energy. Um, and as the moisture increases, uh, the absorption rate also increases. 
<laughs> so once we're getting to that sort of level of 25% indicative moisture and above, we, we can't use the radar directly on that, that area of moisture. Uh, we do need to go to the extremity uh, of that moisture area, which then we can utilise um, we can utilise the inbuilt moisture sensor uh, to help us locate those extremities to be able to then use uh, the radar in that area. So on the screen itself, uh, what we're looking at is uh, we have two sections. So we have radar uh, and then a shake section. So both of them have a, have a uh, grid pattern. Uh, as you can see, uh, and then a blue flash. So the instantaneous movement is indicated by a blue flash uh, from the left that it flickers out from. Uh, and then we see in the grid pattern, uh, we'll get a signature uh, traveling from the right to the left. And the end of that box is, is 10 seconds of movement. The shape section is purely an accelerometer uh, of sorts. Uh, we don't want any movement in the shake area at all. So it also has a line wave in the uh, grid pattern uh, in the grid box and also a uh, bar graph flash. Uh, so we don't want movement there. Uh, ideally, all we want it is in the uh, in the radar section. There is a gain control function. Uh, it goes from 1 to 10. Uh, there is no set level for that to be on. It does vary widely. Uh, dependent upon uh, a few factors, uh, but material uh, being the the, mo the foremost uh, uh, the foremost reason why we need to adjust. So termites, uh, if you're going through trying to penetrate through thicker material, more dense material, or termites are uh, further beyond that material, uh, you may need to increase the gain. At times, you may need to uh, decrease the gain a little, dependent on how close they are to the to the material you're. Uh, Trying to penetrate. As you go up in the gain levels, so eight, nine, and ten, it does become problematic uh, in trying to hold it quite steady. Uh, so when you are using it on eight, nine, and ten, it's recommended to be using uh, to be using a solid platform uh, to have the device on. Uh, that'll certainly remove you from the the situation. Um, or give us any false sort of uh, false signals uh, from our personal vibration. So again, touching on the gain levels, consider it a volume button uh, for the for the screen of what we're viewing. It does not increase the the microwave output uh, or the penetrative ability. Uh, that remains constant. Uh, all we're doing. Uh, is turning up the volume or magnifying what's on the screen uh, for us to view. As we can see here, we have gain three, gain six, and gain nine. Uh, and if you look on the um, those pictures, you can see moving from uh, left to right, it's getting larger as the gain level has increased. So once you need to get it to a level where you can interpret the data successfully. Um, so if it's too small, you, you'll miss out on some of the subtleties, some of the clues. Uh, if it's too large, it starts distorting it uh, for you. So again, it makes it very difficult for interpretation uh, purposes. This little video here is just a uh, little experiment to indicate, I'll show you what uh, what's happening with the gain level being moved. Uh, so there is some artificial movement to left of screen. Uh, and it is moving at the same speed and the same distance from that timber that the unit is resting against. Uh, so I'll just play the video. Uh, you'll see a hand come across and adjust the gain level and then just take note of, of what you see on the uh, uh, in the radar section.
Okay, so hopefully you could see what was happening there. Uh, so it is quite simple. Again, I need to reiterate that we're not increasing the output at all. It is just a volume button. Okay, so as far as positioning the device, um, uh, there's a few pieces of equipment which are available uh, through Termitrack. One is a tripod, uh, which does connect to the threaded insert uh, just above the battery compartment on the device. Uh, those uh, tripods extend to about uh, roughly three metres uh, or a little bit more. So very handy for getting up to high areas uh, instead of having to climb ladders and so forth. Uh, also monopods. Uh, so they attach as well on the threaded insert on the device uh, and these are more of a again a positioning tool It's not for holding and trying to reach up high uh, At all uh, Because you will put movement into it But for getting into places where you physically can't get your body in with your arm so it gives you an extension uh, of your arm uh, essentially uh, So getting into tight spots like roof spaces for example behind equipment uh, behind furniture, under benches and, and the like, uh, or using it against walls, uh, there are some stability feet available. Uh, but there is the built-in flip stand, obviously, uh, or use whatever's at your disposal uh, to be able to uh, uh, stack up uh, books or boxes or whatever it may be, get the unit where it needs to be. So there is no right or wrong way um, as far as that is concerned. It's about positioning um, of the device. And as long as the device is solid uh, when you're using it, that's the main thing that, uh, that matters. Okay, so interpretation of the data uh, is what we need to uh, we need to achieve, and it is just data. So it is just interpretation uh, of that data that we need to do. So there are a few subtleties within uh, within the uh, patterns that we are seeing on the screen, uh, which certainly can help us with the identification process. <coughs> Excuse me. So all those we'll, we'll talk about uh, the screen uh, that we're looking at, and I'll highlight the little uh, subtleties. Uh, which I'm looking out for to help with my termination. But there's also a few other things involved, which, uh, which I'll explain to you, certainly helps. Uh, so termites are quite unique uh, in the respect of that, that physically, uh, they are built, built very, very similar across the board. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of termite or where we are in the world. Uh, there's a few things which are quite consistent. Uh, one of those happens to be the way they move. Uh, and also the way they uh, interact with each other, their colony, very touchy-feely. Um, they, they do tend to elephant trail quite significantly. Uh, they group grouping together, uh, travel sideways and so forth. So with all of that taken in respect, we've noticed that there, there is some commonalities uh, with termite patterns. So if we're looking at the pattern up on the left under the heading of uh, subterranean termites, uh, th that's a fairly common sort of a pattern that we do get. Uh, now, what we're going to be looking at here is is in the peaks and the valleys. Um, there's a consistency here uh, that we're going to be be uh, exploring or, or discussing. So, on the on the uh, pattern to the left, you'll, you'll notice that there is some spiky sections, uh, third grid in from the left, and then uh, second grid from the right. In between that is what we're going to be looking at, uh, and it is the area. Uh, of the peaks and the valleys that we need to discuss. You'll note that these valleys and the peaks, they, they do not have perfectly uh, pitched tops, if you will. They have sort of little cutouts or little step downs uh, into them. Um, even on the peaked ones or the large spiky parts, you can see how they have sort of little plateaus. Um, so a couple of angles on them. And now that's very consistent with termites as we, we've found over the years. A lot of it is to do with their the way that they do walk um, uh, throughout their workings. But what we're looking at with the peaks and the valleys is uh, the consistency of where we have the valley and then the following peak, it's almost identical 
uh, to the valley prior to it. Uh, so if we're looking at that from the third grid in, we start from that one. If we look at the, the base of it uh, and then slowly look up to the top, you can see that those two patterns come in the same there. And then as we move along to the right, uh, you'll start to notice that similarity starting to occur. Uh, so going from the, the, the valleys up to the peaks. So if we're flipping the, the patterns upside down, it's almost identical as we travel along here. Okay, so that is something that is very, very common uh, with termites that we've found. As the movement or the creature is in the field of view, uh, it's on the low side. Now that's purely we mentioned earlier about uh, termites, uh, or sorry, moisture absorbing um, uh, the microwave energy. So there is absorption of the microwaves from the creature itself. Uh, more, more termites there are, more creatures there are, more absorption. Uh, so what's happening is it is uh, trying to bring the, the pattern down and then when we get a break in the movement or break in the moisture uh, is when uh, then we're getting a release of energy and then we get the spike or the peak of it. And, and that's where that, 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 uh, that similarity in the pattern does come in. Now what the spikes are, is, is more activity uh, or heavier aggregation um, in a particular area, uh, if you will. Uh, so as there is more activity, there's more absorption. So th it's trying to keep that pattern low or, or produce it into a, into a flat line. And it's from that flat line, uh, then when we get the break of moisture, that it increases. Uh, and releases a larger a larger spike of energy, uh, giving us that spike there. So a few other things that I do do uh, to help with termination is manipulate the the, the area uh, or manipulate the termites themselves. Uh, so with that, it's just a matter of tapping around the area to trigger a response from termites. Uh, termites are very shy, uh, quite a defenseless creature, so they do operate um, uh, on, on picking up any any clues or cues uh, outside of their immediate colony members. So they are a very soft-footed creature, so they're susceptible to picking up uh, vibrations which aren't theirs or from the colony members. Uh, and with that uh, in itself, so we can utilise that against them. So by having the radar in the area, watching the patterns, we tap around the area which will trigger a response from the termites. And then we'll see a notable change um, uh, to the patterns. Uh, and that's a very good indication uh, that it is termite activity uh, in there. Uh, and obviously, depending on the type of termite that you're dealing with, uh, will depend on, on the amount of change that we're getting. Um, so obviously, a lot of termites, when you do upset them, soldiers will bang their heads or they vibrate their bodies and it goes down. So they're either trying to uh, bring more soldiers to the area uh, or, or send workers away um, and, and, and so forth. So it is about using uh, their own um, biology or, or defence mechanisms against them uh, for them to uh, show themselves. And we can clearly see that happening on the, uh, on the screen of the, the Termitrack. Whilst we're doing that for the determination uh, of termite activity, what it's also helping with uh, is that it can rule out um, it can rule out certain certain other issues which we may come across. Uh, now, such as vibration. So with that uh, vibration we, we can get um, is from electrical devices, so from fans, uh, washing machines, fridges, uh, air conditioning units even uh, can send a mechanical vibration through the material that we may be testing. Uh, and, and with that, and with that vibration as such, when we're manipulating the termites to, to try and get them to move, 
um, and, and change the pattern. Well, that won't happen if it is a mechanical vibration. It's not going to change, or, or metal reflection, for example. That won't change at all. So again, uh, it's about ruling certain things out uh, and leading us closer to the mark um, or our goal of uh, being uh, termite activity. Uh, I'll show you this little video here. Uh, it does explain. Uh, it does explain quite a few. So this is in a, uh, a structure um, in Australia. So it is a, a concrete slab on ground, um, flooring with timber framing, plasterboard walls, brick outside. So there was a significant termite uh, activity within this structure. Uh, and so this little video will just give you a, 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 a front all. Um, showing a few little tips and tricks of how, how it can be used, what we're looking at on the screen. Okay, so now we're back into a different section of home. Now, I highlighted this area this morning. Uh, it actually was highlighted this area by a very clever little dog. So we come back to this area of the radar first up. Now, you can see I've got marks you're looking up here. So I spent a little time this morning. All these marks have indicated activity. So there's a double stud in here behind the door front. So I've indicated that. Now, if we look at the pattern here, it's a lot more intensity than what we were actually getting uh, previously in that other section where the moisture. Now, I'm just going to move it up a couple of these other marks, which I knew I had this morning. If I come up a bit higher here, I'll put on the same mark. And I'll just hold that there nice and steady. I'll stop talking for the moment and look at the pattern. So that instance, we need to turn that pattern down. So I'll drop that down to six even. Very healthy. But what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to move it sideways off that area. So you see now what's happening is that's going down to a flat line. The reason I've done that is to rule out if there's any shaking with me creating vibration to give us a pattern. And it, there's a little bit there now for me talking. If I'm not talking, you see that's coming back flat. If I go back to it mark. And there we go, getting that heavy intensity again. All right, so hopefully that's a brief explanation for you and you understand exactly what we're trying to do with moisture areas, and then checking in for uh, termite activity leading to moisture, but also a series of marks. So each of these marks are stepping stones, and that's showing me, we go all the way up here, I've got up to this point here. Now there is another room adjacent to this entrance where we are getting activity quite heavy activity. So what I'm trying to do now is work out where have they entered the structure. Once I've done this process, then we'll work out the best way to treat it. All right, okay, until next time. Have a good day, everyone. Okay, so obviously construction uh, is different um, for where I am to where you are, but hopefully that has shown you uh, a, a good way of um, seeing certain things. Um, testing yourself, whether it's you holding uh, and so forth. So it's still the same principle, doesn't matter where you are in the world, of how to use it uh, and so forth. Okay. Okay, so that's the radar section. Um, to those of you that have joined, do we have uh, any any questions from that? Yeah, uh, good afternoon. This is Nitin Jakta. I want to know whether you have tasted this or you have tasted in very different materials, building materials. So you have any conclusion if soft wood is there, what depth it maximum it can penetrate, if hard wood is there, what depth is soil bricks are there, concrete blocks are there. Have you any taken any research on this what maximum up to what depth it can penetrate the microwaves? Um, so depth depth penetration is that what you're you're, you're asking? 
yeah in different materials maximum yeah. depth i am i am worried about to, up to what maximum depth it can penetrate okay so it does vary and it, and it is purely um uh, varies due to density uh so with timber uh with, with softwoods um so for example a pine uh, which, is most, which is most common uh most common where i am uh with framing timbers uh we're getting up to around the 85 millimeter penetration 85 millimeter okay thanks yeah for um, timber. as we go up into hardwoods or more mm -hmm. dense material that reduces um okay yeah now there's a few factors that obviously does affect penetration um particularly in timber uh, moisture is is one thing which which mm -hmm. does affect uh what's happening there uh, and also whether we're trying to go through the grain or with the grain of those timbers. So it can, it can change depending on which side of the timber that, uh, that you're running it through. Um, now, as far as concrete blocks or bricks, um, it, it will get into the internals of a concrete block, uh, but it doesn't go all the way through a, a concrete block that's uh, been, been uh, filled uh, with with concrete in its core, uh, you know that that turns into that's turning us into sort of a what nearly 200 millimeters of solid concrete, and, and it's not going to penetrate through that. 19 millimeters. Okay. No, no. So what what I'm saying is it's 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 it, it will get in inside the the concrete block uh, mm. only if it's not filled. If it's an okay. open core, um, it, it, it can't make it all the way through. Okay, sir. Sir, just I have one question. In concrete block in India, the construction technology use is hollow concrete blocks. So, what will be the penetration in case if it is a hollow? It is not filled. What you uh, told me earlier. Okay, so with with the concrete, the the, the blocks, do they do they fill them? It's a hollow concrete, concrete block. Yeah. Yep, they keep yeah. them hollow. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, you will be going to the internal of that block. It will get through the side wall of the concrete block and it will get into that internal okay. area or the hollowness uh, into the core. There's, there's no question about that. It can certainly do that. And generally the client have curiosity to know, okay, what is the penetration of this, our radar technology? How much in case of this hollow block, uh, how much uh, it can get the penetration for the result um well it will, it will penetrate to the hollow is is, is what, yeah, I'm, what yeah. I'm, is is what i'm getting at there so uh, i mean your concrete blocks are only sort of 25 mil thick and then you're into the hollow aren't you um so yeah 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 so it'll certainly penetrate into that yes okay thank you thank you very much yeah so i so, can suggest my client a minimum 20 centimeter to 25 centimeter it can penetrate so generally the wall size is less than 30 centimeter so it is easily to identify the termites in case of the concrete hollow block multi-story building yeah no it's not going through 25 centimeters of concrete Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is here the multi-story construction style is MI construction, so they use hollow blocks only in Mumbai. Particularly, I'm from Mumbai, Bombay. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Um, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit confused, but look, it will get to the internal of a hollow concrete block. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. See, basic, uh, see, sir, this in basically in India, what we are telling that here construction activities, concrete RCC buildings, okay, then brick walls or concrete blocks walls are there, and timber is not in, used in the structural things, but timber is used for interior things like uh, you are making wardrobes, tables, chairs, yep. for this timber is used. Not in the uh, structure. Window frame, window frame. Frame. Yeah. Yeah. I will add to the team. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Only uh, that that much and with the, this, uh, what uh, they were interior wardrobes and all are made with very raw wood. It is very raw wood, like plywood, 
block boards or see then uh, engineering wood they called it is it is called as a particle boards this is a very soft wood and termite attack these things easily yep yeah 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 well the the, the termite will certainly penetrate into that type of material for you yeah yeah they they take the support of the walls and they attack the furnitures yeah yeah no understood understood uh, i can understand that uh, so you having the termite ingress mainly coming up through um, cracks in concrete or where the concrete abuts the block walls or are they coming up yes, through sir. the block uh, and then coming out through mortar joints? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. So yeah. we are at present using only microwave system in the furnitures, wooden furnitures only to detect. In walls, we are not getting any proper results. I don't know. We are using from 2007. Rentokil PCI is using from 2007. But in walls, we are not getting proper readings. But in the furniture, wooden furniture, we are getting proper readings. Yeah, OK. OK, well, look, it'll certainly do what you're trying to achieve um, with, with that. But it's not, um, you know, concrete flooring. You're not trying to track under the concrete floor. And, and things like that, are you? Yeah, concrete flooring also very less uh, termite infestation is there, but it is in the walls and furniture. Concrete walls, sir, we are, our main concern is concrete wall, uh, uh, concrete wall, Nitin, am I right? Yes, yep. correct. Yes, yep. Jaldi, right. correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's 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 from that that they're they're coming out through the mortar joins and so forth, and then getting into the the, the other timber structures that you have inside the the wardrobes or furniture and and, and things like that. Because right. sir, here the condition is like that: hollow concrete block through which electrical conduits and all wirings and cables are running. And yep. we have found out through these electrical conduits. There are yes. uh, subterranean termites traveling. It is yep. easy for them to have a path. Yeah, no, understood. Yeah, and, and look, and you can, the turbotrack will work into those conduits as well um, in, in certain areas. And obviously that's giving these termites a, a ready-made highway for them. They're coming from a long way away then because um, it's very easy for them to travel. Um, so, yeah, so, so, so how, are you, how are you treating them in that scenario? Yes, we are treating them. Yeah, we are checking also, but we are not finding. And then we don't have other alternate. We have to remove the switches and we have to apply the chemical. So, yeah. Uh, to apply the precise chemical, that's why the question is asked. Yeah, so what, what product are you using to treat the termites in that scenario? Uh, we, are, we are using imidacloropide as well as bifrenzine in India. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, so you're using it as a liquid or a foam? No, it's a liquid. We don't have bait in India. There is no registration of bait in India like Australia. Ah, okay, okay. So so with, the, with your... You uh, see, liquid... I was when in Australia. I had been visited site with the Astra Press Control. I yep. find out that there, in Australia, you, uh, they are using more bait. Where India, we don't have access to the bait. We have to compulsory use the liquid of the yeah. chemical. Yeah, okay. Okay. So so it's just purely liquid. You're not you're not mixing it with the foaming agent. No. We no. are using dust also in electrical switches, dust powder. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So through conduit and around switches, yeah, you're using a, a like a fibrinol based dust. Yeah, because or... we are not supposed to use the uh, 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 water or any flammable liquid inside so Correct. we don't have other choice to use only the dust oh, can cool. be applied yeah 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 but it, with with concrete blocks with your hollow blocks how are you treating for hollow blocks we are doing the oh, you see uh, drilling at 45 degree because uh, here the, here the problem is there uh, pre-construction is taken at certain points but majority peoples are facing the white tents uh, and we are giving treatment as a post-construction anti-termite treatment. That is a yeah. drilling, filling and sealing. Drilling method we are using at wall and floor junction. We are doing the drilling at 45 degree angles and injecting the chemical at the bottom of the walls. Yeah, 
yeah, okay. So you, you, you get him to where the bottom of the block's sitting on the concrete foundation um, and yes. then around that foundation, correct? Yes. Yeah. Not foundation, yeah. it is in the bottom of the wall, sir. Foundation, it is not possible in sir, Mumbai. Actually, foundation there are multi-level building. Because uh, uh, what we are practicing here, endotermite treatment for the generally in India, there is very less bungalows. Here is the multi-story building concepts is that 20 story, 30 story, 40 story. Ah, uh, yeah. And we are getting termite on 30th floor, 35th floor like that. Yeah, yeah, no, okay, understood. Understood, yeah. So it's, it's, it's here at a certain time, society do not have the contract. So individual flat owner give us the contract for the treatment. So I, I, I have to treat only that flat. I cannot treat the neighbor's flat also or the flat below the my clients. That's, yeah, that is my limitation. Yeah, yeah, no, no, and un, un, under understand the problems that you're facing. Then yes, yeah. So yeah, treating directly into the blocks themselves, where the activity is, is what you're you doing with the liquid. Correct. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, no, no. Fair enough. All right. So, so as far as using the Termitrack is concerned, in those scenarios, you're just using it. Uh, are you using it to try and find the full extent of the activity in those blocks or are you trying to use it to track it back to where they first originated from the soil and then you're treating those areas as well? See, soil area we are unable to treat. I am having an apartment at 28th floor. I don't have the ownership at ground floor. Ground yeah. floor person will not allow me to do anything. So I have to concentrate only my apartment of 20th floor. Yeah, okay. okay. Or if I track also, I can't do the treatment. Tracking is also very big difficulty with thermal track because there is a different building materials used in the buildings. This is a soils will be there, uh, cement will be there, sand will be there, gravels will be there, then yep. steel will be there. So there are many different materials in the building construction. So yeah. it is very difficult to track it Tracking is very difficult with uh, with tracking in our India. Ah uh, no, understood now. With those, with a lot of those issues that you'd be facing, yes, it would be problematic. Yes. Um, and, and in particular, if you're you're talking a multi-level uh, building, if you're only dealing with it up on that floor up high, yes. um, so essentially you're just getting it out of the apartment of your client, and that's it. And then that's it. But, it, but you're not necessarily killing the colony. Uh, no, we are not killing the. We are making a chemical barrier so that in that apartment termites will not come. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Until they until they find a, a, another crack um, in, in in the mortar <laughs> or a block and they come up the other side. Correct. Yeah. No, we are treating entire apartment. We are treating entire apartment. If I am the yeah. owner of two thousand square feet apartment, I will treat two thousand square feet. All bottom of the walls, I will uh, do the drilling at forty five and create a continuous bam deer in twenty two thousand square feet apartment. Enter. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then yeah, just say, yeah, it was just primarily treating inside the block. Inside the walls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Understood. And there are limitations in India for this. No, oh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm starting to gather that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's, yeah, that's incredibly problematic um, <laughs> in, in that sense. I mean, not just from using this device, but from termite management um, yes. a, 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 as a whole. If you're only allowed to, to stop them so far up, uh, I mean, really, we want to stop them from the ground. Correct. That, that uh, principle we are not adopting to kill the entire colony and stopping from the ground. Just we are protecting whatever the ownership I have, that much premises I am. Okay. Here. Okay. Now that's given me a big, uh, a very good picture on what you're dealing with um, in, in that sense. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, very difficult scenarios you have to work with there. Yeah. So, no, I can understand that, um, how that's happening. So, as far as termites getting into any timber things like wardrobes or uh, I'm presuming your window frames, are they steel or are they timber? Uh, timber also, window steel also, and there are uh, uh, marble frames also. Many, yeah. there are different types of frames. It is not timber every time. There may be steel or marble frames also. But this thermal uh, track, we are, we are using very nicely because in the premises, wherever the infestation is there in the woodwork, 
we can identify and show to the customer yeah this is the infested port this is the imported a location in your flags yeah. so that helps us greatly yeah yeah okay so if you're if you're getting if you're getting activity in in, in a timber wardrobe or, or timber window frame you're just again mm -hmm. using your liquid directly yes, into liquid. their workings correct yeah yes okay. yes yeah and then and then essentially you're just treating that area adjacent to the block uh or, or if that item's on that block wall you're treating around that area itself yes yes yeah yeah okay okay no understood um uh, yeah so obviously we're we're sort of uh construction techniques is just uh, you know worlds apart um in your country to my country in that respect mm -hmm. so yeah no I, I can appreciate what you're saying um in in that so no that's, that's a that's definitely a tough tough gig and, and i can see uh now why you, you're not you're not using a lot of the moisture uh no, no, correct. because uh, there's no need. Yeah. Um, no need see i have a one apart building in which 500 flats apartments are there 80 80 apartments are in first uh, they have a seepage leakage moisture problem but in two flats only two apartments only termite issue is there so it is not relative where moisture is there there only termites are there so it is very yeah. difficult to identify so we are not reliable on moisture meter we are just reliable on radar system yeah 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 so so but um with with the concrete blocks are they are they painted at all they are painted yeah plastered and so, painted yeah, yeah, yeah sir, so. it is painted it is very well decorated yeah um so i mean with moisture though um so if you are getting um damp rising and and so forth uh with it being painted you're not always going to see the early signs of that either are you see if moisture is there in the walls paint will be damaged we can easily identify where yeah, the moisture through, is there yeah through the effluent identified we do not have to use moisture meter to identify moisture yeah yeah no i understood because there's no timber that's being decayed by it anyway so there's no real yeah. early early warning signs in that respect um okay. yeah okay no un understood what what you what you're saying and where you're coming from um and obviously if you're seeing that moisture in the in the blocks uh obviously then that's alarm bells because that's the side of the building or the area of the building where you're, you're most predominantly going to have your termite activity as well mm -hmm. okay. yeah no okay no, un understood. So, so look, I mean, so, so the Termitrax that you you have is 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 a radar only, or do you have the all sensor on them? Termitrax is right the instrument to just show to the customer whether the the infestation is there in their apartment or their premises. Yeah. But we, okay. it is not easy to, easy to track the from where termites are coming. Yeah. So, so it is your your, your Termitrax is only the radar. The motion you don't have the moisture or the thermal no we field. don't have moisture only radar only radar yeah. and... okay but okay. in india we are using radar technology only because that is much more feasible and practical yeah yeah no no understood understood okay all right um so so do you want to do you want to go through the moisture sensor on this but if you don't have it there's not much need of definitely we will learn sir learning is a process we must get uh, uh, ourselves educated about the moisture also correct right sir right yep so you, you, you'd still like me to go through the moisture sensor on the device yes yes yep. yes no problems at all no problems okay so so yeah so obviously it, it, it is a big difference um because primarily we're we're looking for moisture as a conduciveness to termite activity but then also um, for, for premature decay uh, and so forth. But um, that is a lot more prevalent for us because we're we're living in timber framed homes. Um, so it's a it's a bit of a two pronged attack there um, as, as far as structural damage and so forth goes, where where you're not really going to experience that um, per se. Uh, okay. All right, so the moisture sensor, though, it's it's very easy on the Termitrack uh, to be able to use. Obviously, there's lots of other um, moisture sensors available uh, around the world uh, and, and using for different materials. 
So it's pretty much we can use it on, on, on numerous materials. We can use it on concrete block. We can use it on concrete um, uh, in the relative mode. But the direct mode for the percentage um, is, is more so for timbers uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so, I mean, if you do have timber frames and, and, and things like that, yes, you can use the moisture on direct scale uh, to, 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 to see what sort of percentages you are getting. Uh, but primarily, you would probably get most, uh, most benefit uh, from using, using the relative mode, okay? And, and the relative mode is purely uh, checking for differences across larger, larger areas. So you can go across your block wall uh, and it will highlight any areas which are, um, you know, do have a higher amount of moisture in a particular area. Um, so then that could give you an, um, a more focal point, uh, if you will, for, for, for uh, termite activity. Uh, so, so the direct so, uh, mode, as I said, is a percentage. Uh, dial gauge it moves. And look, and that that is primarily timber that you're going to be using that on. So 20% 20, 20 moisture on average in timber is, is, uh, is enough for mould, uh, spore growth, uh, fungal decay. 30% uh, moisture content is, is uh, fibre saturation. Uh, but you're going to see that, uh, literally, if it's in the open. If it's in framing timbers, well, that's different. Um, you know, that, and that's where these uh, uh, metres really come in their own. But now, Going over to the relative mode, and this is all we're doing is comparing one one area to another, the relative difference, if you will. Uh, so it's very, it is very simple to use, um, and, and we give it a start point, a reference point, and then from that start or reference point, when we move, it tells us one way or the other whether we've moved to higher or lower moisture. Okay, so very, very, very simple to uh, to achieve. Uh, now, when uh, when we open uh, the TurboTrack moisture sensor, uh, it runs through an ambient calibration process. Okay, so that's factoring in humidity. Uh, now, I don't know uh, I don't know how humid it is in in, uh, in certain areas where you are. Uh, at all, but it certainly does take into account um, extra humidity values uh, that we do come across. Uh, so it does make um, slight changes within itself. Uh, for us to be able to uh, uh, make accurate, accurate readings. So it does need to be open to air. Uh, you can't have it sitting on or on material uh, or holding your hands around it, okay? Uh, and then it'll work successfully. Now, uh, do you use any moisture meters at all? No, we are not using any moisture yeah. meters. No, no moisture meter. Okay, okay. So so what, what this screen is here is it's just a direct comparison to another unit called a Tremex, which, uh, which is uh, a fairly common uh, device in, our, in, 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 in my country. Uh, and other parts around the world. Um, so if you're not familiar with those or don't use them, it's not much point giving you the comparison uh, to them. So, but what we can do, um, I'll, I'll give you an, this little video here. Is, is it's just a promotional video, but it does show you how the moisture meter can be used um, within a structure, uh, and then we'll, then we'll talk a little bit more about it.
Okay, so that was just purely to show you uh, how it can be used across materials. Uh, you can slide it and so forth. Okay. Uh, okay. So obviously, it is. It is the the direct is more more designed for timbers uh, to being used. So it's probably not not so beneficial for you in 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 that sense. Um, whereas the relative uh, the relative meter. Is, is probably more uh, suitable for what you're doing and the materials you're using it on. So this is a, this is a screen we do have on our relative meter. Uh, so we place the unit itself um, with that black ring. We place that on, on material. In your case, for example, we place it on a block wall. Now what we do is we tap anywhere in that white box of the screen, uh, which gives us then a, a reference point or a start point. So then you can scan it across other areas on that block wall uh, and you're going to be able to see whether you've got higher or lower moisture from that start point. So if blue comes out, uh, you've moved to a higher moisture area. Uh, if red comes out, you've moved to a lower moisture area. So that in itself, can direct you to an area of possible concern, uh, even if you can't see uh, that damp rising uh, through the white efflorescence on, on block work or or, uh, or the paint flaking um, and, and so forth. Uh, so it can be advantageous in certain areas, probably uh, more so around your window areas uh, or particularly the ground levels. Uh, where they may experience damp rising. Uh, so in that sense, it is you can still use it, and that relative can be used on most materials. That can be used on concrete, it can be used on block, it can be used on timber, uh, timber panelling, uh, and so forth. So, uh, so it is very handy um, to be able to use. And as I say, you might not be able to visually see signs, uh, of a moisture problem, but this this device certainly would be able to pick it up for you if there is a a, a variance in in moisture. Okay. Uh, all right. So what I'll do, I'll run these little videos for you. Uh, now, obviously, again, construction completely different, so we're using them in a in a slightly different manner, uh, but. What this video will do is give you an indication on how it gets all turned on uh, and able to be used. Uh, and you can translate that across to the, the construction uh, that you do have. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to double check and wash the area. Right now it doesn't work on my moisture because it gets absorbed. So we need to highlight and pinpoint the extremities of that moisture to enable us to use the radar. So we'll just go ahead and do that now. So what we're going to do, we'll just show you here when we turn on the on the moisture sensor, what happens is, is a, this is an important thing to do. Always stand the unit up, the sensor area needs to be open. So as we open the moisture here, you'll see what it's doing is running through its calibration process. It is a bit of a humid day today, there's been some rain around. So what's happening is it's going to factor that into the equation. So now we're open. So I'm just going to run it across the wall over here uh, and we'll see what sort of figures we're getting. So just down low, so that's not an unusual sort of a figure for where I'm located and time of year. Now it's starting to climb up. So all we're going to do is just roughly in this area where it is all through, just got a general, just a little pencil mark on the wall. So I'm still going along. See so that's, that's elevated moisture. Now we're just starting to break off. So just generally speaking, closed area, just another pencil mark. So what we have to do now, we need to flick over to the relative meter. So to do that, direct moisture on off. We're now on relative. So this is what we're going to use to pinpoint the extremities of the moist area. So all I'm going to do is roughly go back to the center of my wall. Uh, where I had that moisture, I will now hold that on the wall, over on anywhere in this white box, I've now referenced it to that wall area's moisture, my moisture, humidity of the day and so forth. 
So now I'm just sliding along the wall. You can see now red's come out, red's picked. So that's telling me I'm to the least amount of moisture along this area, comparison to where I referenced. So now I'm just going to come back, sliding back towards where I referenced it. Now just on the screen there, we see that red's just disappeared. That now has become the exact extremities of the moisture. I'm going to use that central to where my sensor is and mark the wall. So over on the wall here, you can just see this mark here. That was our extremities this way. This mark here is our bottom. So along here, roughly the size slightly changes. Extremities here. It is quite high now, that is above the bottom plate. So it is indicating that there is quite a bit of moisture, more than likely, it's due to the uh, ensuite shower that is leaking. But we're going to investigate because, as we know, moisture is highly conducive for termites. They generally won't be in that high amount of moisture, however, they will come towards it as a, as a condition and usually on the fringes. So, what we've got to do now. We need to get on the radar and check for any action, motion, travelling to and for that area. Okay, so the, obviously the construction is different to what you deal with, to what I'm dealing with, uh, but the principle is still the same in that area. Um, other than uh, if you're trying to locate um, a build-up of, of, of termites, for example, in your block wall uh, somewhere, the moisture sensor can certainly work in, in that sense, um, particularly if there is mudding um, from the subterranean termites there, uh, that is changing the density as well. So you will get an increase um, of, of moisture and elevation uh, of moisture from your reference. Okay, if we find some moisture in the premises, in one particular area, what will be the action plan for termite control? Uh, for control? Yeah, if I got the moisture in one location, what yep. should I do next? What should I do next? How should I treat it or what uh, further in uh, uh, I should identify what for termites? Uh, I, okay, so at that point, if you're picking up moisture, you, you don't know if it's termites or not. Um, yes. So you know, obviously yes. we need to investigate um, wh whether it is just a moisture ingress problem or whether there is termites um, as such. So what that was doing there uh, was, was sort of just highlighting finding the fringes of the moisture and then we use the radar at that. So mm -hmm. the, the next little video I have is showing after I've made my marks of the extremities of the moisture, uh, then I'm using, using the radar. Uh, to detect any movement that, that's coming towards it, um, perhaps. So, so that is one way of doing it. Um, for, if, for you if, to if I am, there is a moisture, I am using radar. Radar uh, microwaves will be absorbed by the moisture meter. I Correct. will not get the proper reading. Yeah. So what you need to do is you go you go to the edges of that moisture. Okay. Okay, so particularly if you're up on the upper levels, the termites don't just appear there. Uh, but if there is a moisture source there from, from your client on an upper level, um, for, for whatever reason, obviously then termites will uh, travel up that high to that area, correct? Um, okay. so, so then locate that, that moisture area, find the extremities of it, and then as that moisture is... Um, uh, cutting off or getting lower, that's where you're using the radar to the edges of that to see if the termites are actually traveling towards that moist area. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, because in moisture we can't use, at the edge we have to use. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, so you're doing it in conjunction with each other. Okay. Okay. Right, right, yes, thank so you. I'll just, um, We'll play this second video. So this is the follow-up to that one where that one was purely highlighting the, the moisture area. Uh, and now this one is the follow-up where I'm using the radar after finding that uh, that moisture area, okay? Okay, so, oh, here we go. 
This is our wall where we checked out the extremities of the moisture. These mates. So what I want to do now is put the radar, the radar here. I want to check along this area to see if we're getting any activity of termites travelling towards this moisture source. As we know, it's very, very common to exploit that. So, you see here, that's my extremities. So I'm just going to start over to the edge. I'm going to run it on the flip stand. So at that angle, what I'm doing with the emission, the motion, that's going to get down to the leading edge of the bottom plate, sort of down to the bottom. So we'll just let that sit there. I'll move back. And it's showing a little bit of a pattern. What I'm going to do now, you'll hear this. So you see that's intensified from me tapping. And we'll sit back and we'll watch what happens to our pattern. So what's happened, you'll see from when we're hitting it, it's disappeared. Now the pattern has changed a little bit to when we initially put it there. So that's a good indicator the termites are there. What I'm going to do is position just a pencil. That's indicating I'm on the 45. So now I'll just move it along random areas, okay, but on along the same plane. So we'll just move the screen up a bit closer. So I have gone about 12 inches or so here. Make sure we're all still. Again, I'm getting a little bit of a pattern. So I'll give it a bit of a... So that was me. Now here, we can see those termites, or the movement has certainly intensified that wee bit. Very strong indicator of termites again, coming through there. So I'll just do one more spot. Oh, I better mark that, sorry. Just fade pencil, come back along here, same sort of distance again. And that's indicating, so it's worth uh, investigating a bit further. We'll come right back down to the corner. We'll see here actually now in this corner, that pattern is a lot more. So that is an, again a very good indicator. They're traveling along the external wall and then they've highlighted this moisture zone and they're probably coming in, traveling in on small numbers to start with uh, to investigate. Okay, so hopefully that sort of answered a little bit more how we're using that in conjunction. Uh, using the uh, radar to come in after uh, uh, using the moisture sensor. All right, so does that all sort of make sense there as we're uh, dealing with that? Okay. All right, so... Um, all right, so as I said, obviously our constructions are a little bit different, but we can still utilise that in the uh, in the same way. Uh, so any any other questions with with that? No, no, we, because we don't have wooden flooring in India. We have, uh, what we hear the practice is even on the concrete floor for the decoration, the wooden uh, flooring is used. That's all. But so. Um, Question of moisture doesn't arise in case of India because our flooring is concrete flooring. Only the problem is the wall. When there is leakage is happen, then uh, this moisture will be ideal as a guidance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well. Well. Hopefully Thank that you. was. Hopefully that was sort of helpful to you anyway. Um, uh, yes. What you What you just said. Okay, so okay, so the other the other sensor that we do have is a thermal sensor. Um, 
So in your in your scenario with with uh, block construction and the like, you prob I'll be honest, you're probably not going to get too much use out of it. Um, in that sense, well, yes, it it can give you some information um, along uh, along the lines of um, um, you know cold spots. Uh, if we're picking up cooler. Uh, area through a block wall all of a sudden that can be an indication of a moisture uh, issue if you will okay um, so what, I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll run through the sensor for you anyway um, and and then uh, you, you can see whether or not it'll be uh, useful uh, for you All right, so the thermal sensor on this device is, is similar technology to a thermal image camera, uh, except if we look at it, it technically, this is a infrared thermometer uh, as opposed to a thermal camera. Okay, so we're, we're looking at a, th uh, a thermal camera is is picking up various spots all at once uh, at a wider view, whereas this is only picking up one spot at a time. So think of it as one pixel to many pixels, essentially. But it still operates the same way. That's so differentiating any any thermal anomalies, uh, so any differences in heat as uh, as we go along. So it is very very easy to use, uh, and it gives us the results in a numerical fashion. <coughs> so it certainly doesn't. Uh, we don't have a thermogram, which obviously can, unless you fully understand the science behind thermal imagery, uh, can be confusing at times. Uh, but whereas the term track, it is only uh, numerals that give us the difference. So we're looking at the screen. It's very similar to what we we're just talking about with the moisture sensor, the relative moisture uh, on there. And essentially, that's what it is. It's a it's a relative thermal sensor. So we point it at the material that we want to test. We tap in the screen. Uh, it zeroes it, gives us a start point. Then when we move it. Uh, It'll come out and tell us if it's a higher or lower temperature on the surface. There is no penetration, it must be surface only. Uh, if blue comes out, it's a cooler surface. If red comes out, it's it's uh, a warmer surface. Okay, um, and then we get the numeral, the actual figure um, in there as well. So very simple to use, very basic uh, in its in its uh, usage. Um, how it can be uh, used as well, it operates on a distance to spot ratio. So that, that encompasses how large of the surface area it's actually going to be reading. Um, so it's a 12 to 1 ratio, uh, which means if you are, you are 12 centimetres from the material, it's a 1 centimetre diameter. Uh, area that you're going to be using it. If you're you're 12 inches, one inch. 12 meters, one meter. So the further away you go from the material, the larger the reading area uh, is actually going to be. Okay. Uh, so you must remain parallel once you've set a reference point. Uh, so that's the tapping on the screen. Every time you go to a new building or a new uh, a new location within a building, um, different time of the day, different different day, you need to, new material, you need to re-reference it each and every time uh, that you go to use it, okay? So you get the zero for that area uh, and then you move on. All right, so there's not a lot in it. Um, and, and look, you may find some areas where it may be useful for you, but I, I'd probably suggest with the, the main concrete block construction, uh, there would be limited areas um, uh, for use. Uh, in there, but uh, if you have it, it is well worth uh, trying to, uh, to to utilize. All right. So, any uh, any questions with that? No, no, no. No. Okay. So, do you use thermal technology where you are? Thermal imager, no. No, okay. We don't use. 
yeah, being being primarily concrete block, there's probably not much need. Um, mm -hmm. is, is what I'm thinking at that uh, at that time. See, basically, whatever we use thermal imaging or moisture meter, ultimately we have to use radar system. So why don't you go directly on radar? Why you are using all this stuff? Uh, so, sorry, I, I didn't understand that question. See, ultimately, if you are using a thermal sensor or moisture meter, yeah. after that you have to use radar system. Why not to use radar system at first time? Why you are supporting with thermal and moisture meter? Um, well, after using it also, you have to use radar only. No, no. So, so. Um... No, I think I understand what you're saying. Is, is, is so you're saying the order of which sensor to use, um, essentially. No, so no, look, no. If, if I am using thermal sensor, therm, thermal sensor yeah. uh, camera or anything, and I am using moisture meter, I detect something. Then also later on, I have to use the radar. Well, well, yes, the radar then certainly helps. Then yeah. so so your moisture and your and your thermal sensor, they're they're picking up. Uh, any anomalies, if you will. Yes. Okay. Then, but then that... also for uh, uh, pinpointing or finalizing for the termite identification, I have to use radar. Why not? Yes. First time I will use radar only. Okay. So the the the, the short answer to that is the, the the moisture sensor or the thermal sensor that's pointing you to an area which may not be visible to you. As, okay. as far as activity is concerned, so you, you can't uh, look. We, we wouldn't go. You wouldn't go through the whole building with radar mm. only. It, it would take too long to do. Correct. Correct. So you do your you do your standard uh, inspection techniques first, uh, which hopefully points you to uh, certain areas, um, or the moisture, or the thermal can help point you to an area of concern by picking up those anomalies if there is any. So then when you get that anomaly, you've got an area to focus on with the radar. Okay, okay. So for large area, we have to use thermal or uh, moisture meter and then we have to come down on uh, bottleneck to radar. Yeah, well, yes, that is one way of doing it. Um, obviously, um, knowing you know, you, you know the construction of your buildings that, that you're dealing Got with. It. You you know the areas where predominantly uh, the termites are, are making their access. Okay, so like was mentioned earlier, coming up through electrical conduits and so forth. So you yes. can, if you wanted to, if, if you have common areas on these structures where due to construction techniques or other equipment used, um, i.e. the conduits where it's running, things like that, or water pipes, um, you can use the radar specifically in those areas if you like, without using, mm -hmm. uh, without using the thermal or without using the moisture. You can do that, okay. um, but the the moisture and, and and or thermal just gives you a a, a bit quicker um, for for locating any any specific anomalies, which then obviously that then gives you a, a target point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, so, so yeah, that that would be my sort of suggestion in 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 that sense. But uh, but yeah, yeah, by all means, if you have common areas where they always are, uh, due to whatever factor or reason, yeah, definitely use the um, use the radar only in that area. There's no harm in that. It's just that you can't do the whole building uh, or the yes, whole room. Because... It'll just take physically take too long. Correct. Yeah. That that is the only disadvantage of this uh, thermal track radar. So big areas, large areas, it is very tedious and time consumption. Exactly. Exactly. And, and look, and it's not it's not really designed for that. Um, okay. In that sense, so it, it it is a it's a tool which we couple with our knowledge and experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, now, that's why we do have the other sensors to make that broad scale a little bit easier. Um, yes. but, but yeah, 
our, our, our eyes, um, um, feeling things, looking at things, that, that's going to be just as beneficial to point us to an area of concern um, as such. So, so, I mean, also, you know, if, if, if there's a tim timber window frame, um, for example, um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't run the timber track over the block wall adjacent to that to start with, you'd go to the timber and you could mm -hmm. run your radar across that because if they're coming up through the block wall uh, and, and they're not visible anywhere, but they could be mm -hmm. within the timber framing of that timber. window. So yes. it would make sense that you go to that timber and you go, okay, well, I'm not getting any activity in this timber here. Mm -hmm. You can go around the window on the blocks, not getting any activity, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't continue on further and further yes unless you picked up some more evidence of them yes true yeah um and, and then obviously it's once if you do pick up anything yes then you're going further but you've been given a pathway um to do that procedure then by picking up something else in another area mm. okay no. um well, all right uh, so look, that's the three sensors um, on, on the device. Um, so any any other questions at all from that? I have only one question. What is the distance you advise when you have, we are using this uh, thermal? Uh, yep. Because distance to spot the ratio is most important, what I understand from your uh, video. So what should be the optimum distance? Because we have never used to be honestly technology yep. okay so it, it does depend on the situation um and, and what type of timber so if you're trying to see uh for example again if we use a timber frame window frame or, or, as such you'd want to be closer because okay. you'd be then using a smaller spot um per so se about so one day or two feet gap distance oh one one foot yeah even yeah only Thank 300 you. millimeters 12 inches or so yeah. Um, so then you're using a one inch, but now if you need to do an, a, a section of a wall up to about three or four feet, um, would, would be okay. that sort of size. And, and then you're running it, say, for example, uh, three and a half inch, um, diameter area on the wall where it's taking its readings. Um, but that's the beauty of this device where it, it's, it's that distance to spot is only governing how much area it is going to be reading and so you can reduce the distance depending on the size of the material that uh, that you're trying to test um, and, and it takes the average surface temperature within that diameter area so if you're if you're trying to run it across it say a, a timber window frame that's only four inches thick you're not going to stand back uh, 10 feet or 15 feet because then the area that you're reading is going to be larger than that timber itself. So you want to be closer to keep that readable size within that timber. Thank so, you very much for a nice yep. presentation and uh, giving us nice knowledge. One more question related to Termatrack. Uh, you have internationally Termatrack locator. If somebody wants to find out who has got Termatrack in India, uh, so that is also possible that they can uh, find out that we are having the Termat track machine with us. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't I didn't under, quite understand that. Uh, you have uh, one website where yep. uh, 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 laymen can find out who who are the pest control companies using Termat track. I uh, ah. uh, yep. hear from someone. So is yep. it so true? true. Kid, uh, yeah. So, so through the Termatrack website, um, yes. any 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 registered user of of the Termatrack is is listed on the location yeah. guide. So it's a matter of putting in uh, putting in your location on onto that section on the website, and then it will come up um, any business that has the Termatrack unit in that particular area. Okay, I'll find I can out use the location uh, as India. To check it whether my company name is 
because we are having trauma from last so many years so i will find out whether, whether yeah yeah oh, I, I believe the the name is there or not. yeah, yeah. Oh, look i believe it works the same um globally with with that thing so uh if, if you put in your specific location whether it's your city uh also or, or in australia yeah. we, we we put in a, a say a postcode a, a zip code um and, and it'll come up with any business within a certain distance of us that that has it and it, and it should be the same for, for you in india yeah super if, if i want to put the location in india can it give all all over india or how much thermal track are there uh look you might you might have to to, to narrow it down um uh to to to, to major centers or cities uh and look at it individually that way. i don't know state whether it's collective of the whole country state wise uh sorry can we get state wise in, instead of country wise state wise uh i don't i do not know okay so every city because we have lots of many cities in india yep there may be 20 25000 cities in india yeah okay um so so yeah so look i i think off memory obviously i i don't i don't do it all the time it's more customers that do it um i think you can put a range from your location okay. to how far away from your location i think you can do okay we will try it. we will try it. yeah yeah Thank you very much yeah. for a nice presentation. No worries. Okay. Yeah, I want so to understand, and I want to understand regarding the Termitrack calibration. Yes. We have authorized to calibrate Termitrack in India. Can I get yeah. a refresher training on this? How again we can? Uh, what is the process and how we should calibrate it? Uh, look, I'm not. I'm not sure the calibration rules in India. No, I want a training, refresher training on calibration. Oh, okay. okay, well, the, yeah, well, that's that's what we're sort of doing now, I guess. Um, but there, there is a recording of this session um, that we've done, so you can have a, a, a copy of the recording, and then you can use that within your organisation. Okay. Thanks. Or it's just a matter of reaching out to Termitrack. Um, uh, for the next time any of the, the, the training sessions do come up. Okay, thanks, no problem. Okay. All right, no worries. So thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you, sir. For, for attending today, um, and, and hopefully you, you, you have uh, got something out of it. Yes, we got a lot of knowledge, very good pr presentation, and very- A lot of clarification you. also. Very thank you very much for helping us. Thank you. And educating us. No problem. Thank you. At all. So nice of you. Good day. Because in India it is now just 10 15 a.m. A.m. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, after yeah. so it's yeah. afternoon. So that's about uh oh it's quarter to uh quarter to three in the in the afternoon over oh, here wow. now. So <laughs> that's coming to the end of my day, but uh coming to the middle yeah. of yours, I guess. So thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.